The Feast of Purim commemorates the deliverance of the Jewish people from the evil Prime Minister Haman's conspiracy to destroy them. It's a celebration of God's love and protection in the midst of a hostile world. The story of Purim is recorded in the Book of Esther. It takes place in the ancient Medo-Persian Empire at the time when the 70 years of exile had come to an end and the Jewish people were allowed to go back to the land. While some of the Jews returned to the Promised Land, many stayed in Persia. The story begins with Ahasuerus, the king of the Medo-Persian Empire, removing Vashti as queen and choosing Esther, or Hadassah, a young Jewish woman, to replace her. Shortly after Esther was crowned queen, her cousin Mordecai, one of the king's servants, hears about a plot to assassinate King Ahasuerus. He reports it to Esther, who informs the king, thus saving the king's life. But at that time, there lived an evil prime minister of the empire by the name of Haman. The king ordered his servants to bow before Haman and pay homage to him, so all of them did all except for Mordecai. When Haman heard about Mordecai's refusal to bow before him, he schemed to destroy Mordecai along with all the Jewish people in the land. When Queen Esther learned about Haman's plans, she called for the Jewish people to fast on her behalf. She courageously approached King Ahasuerus concerning Haman's evil conspiracy against her people. Because of Esther's bravery, Haman was sent to the gallows and the Jewish people were permitted to defend themselves against those in the empire who sought to do them harm. In remembrance of the miraculous events that took place, Queen Esther and Mordecai established the observance of Purim to celebrate all that God had done for his people. How is Purim relevant to Christians? Since Purim is a Jewish holiday, people often ask whether or not believers in Yeshua, Jesus, should celebrate it. The answer is yes. First, it's in the Bible, and according to the Apostle Paul, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. The book of Esther is, of course, included in all scripture. Second, if you love the God of Israel and you stand with the Jewish people, then, according to scripture, Purim is for you. Therefore, they called these days Purim after the term Pur. The Jews firmly obligated themselves and their offspring and all who joined them that without fail they would keep these two days according to what was written and at the time appointed every year. Indeed, all who stand in solidarity with the people of Israel are invited to join them in observing Purim. So here are some ideas on how believers today can celebrate this amazing feast. Number one, learn about Purim and what it means today. The best place to start is to read through the book of Esther. It doesn't take long, so set some time aside to read through the book either on your own or with your family. The book of Esther teaches us many lessons about God's faithfulness to his people and how he keeps his promises. It teaches us about the power of fasting and prayer. It teaches us that God can use us in amazing ways if we dedicate our lives to him. So read through Esther and ask God to give you revelation about his character and will for your life. Number two, Fast the day before Purim. This fast is known as the Fast of Esther, and it commemorates the three-day fast observed by the Jewish people just before Queen Esther spoke to King Ahasuerus about Haman's evil plans. Traditionally, the fast begins the day before Purim at sundown and ends at the beginning of Purim at sundown. Fasting and prayer are amazing ways to connect to the story of Purim on a practical level by doing what the ancient Jews did in the events leading up to their deliverance in the story. As Christians, we can also connect our fast to the gospel and our deliverance from sin as we pray for the salvation of the Jewish people and anyone else who doesn't know Yeshua Jesus as their Messiah.
Number three, make Purim baskets. Another Purim tradition is the sending of portions. It is derived from Esther 9.22, which says they should make them days of fasting and gladness and sending portions of food to one another and gifts to the poor. This tradition is observed by making baskets containing food, candy, or um, other small gifts. The baskets are usually decorated and then delivered to friends and family on Purim day. Number four, give to the poor. Part of the celebration of Purim includes giving generously to the poor, so prayerfully seek the Father's will on how you and your family might apply this part of the feast. Meeting the needs of the poor is very close to the Father's heart, and the Feast of Purim is certainly a wonderful opportunity to minister to the poor and needy. Number five, have a costume party. It's traditional to dress up in costume for Purim. This tradition comes from Esther hiding her Jewish identity from King Ahasuerus per Mordecai's instructions at the beginning of the story. Kids love putting on costumes, so you could have them dress up in maybe some royal attire as kings and queens to help them connect to the story. The Bible says, quote, so I commend the enjoyment of life because there is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. Then joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of the life God has given them under the sun. Purim is supposed to be a fun and joyful day, and for many people, dressing up is simply a way to have fun and enjoy the holiday. Number six, tell the story of Esther. On the Feast of Purim, it's customary to read the story of Esther in front of your congregation or synagogue or simply your Bible study group. Um, you can make this as interactive and fun as you'd like. What a lot of people do is they actually give children noisemakers and sit them down in front so that they can boo and yell when the name Haman is mentioned, and then they would cheer when they hear the name Mordecai. This tradition of drowning out the name of Haman is based on Deuteronomy 25, 17 through 19, which tells us that we are to, quote, blot out the name of Amalek. It is believed that Haman was a descendant of Agag, the king of Amalek. So according to the sages, we fulfill the mitzvah to blot out the name of Amalek by making so much noise when Haman's name is mentioned during the reading of Esther that his name is literally blotted out. Number seven, eat Purim themed food. It's traditional to have a special meal with friends and family during Purim. Some traditional foods include a large challah with raisins. It's also customary to eat meals made with beans and peas. And the most famous Purim dish is hamantaschen, which are triangular cookies filled with jelly or fruit. All right, so that's it for now. Hopefully these ideas will be helpful to you as you celebrate this amazing biblical holiday. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about the biblical holidays, I actually have a short little book called A Christian Guide to the Biblical Feasts where I talk about these holidays and how to celebrate them. So there's a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. And um, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, please be sure to subscribe if you aren't already and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I release new content like this. I'll see you next time. Blessings and Shalom.